It might look pretty ordinary, but this filing cabinet is actually pretty cool and contains around 1.4 million different plant specimens. Some of these date back to 1770 when they were collected by botanists Joseph Banks and Daniel Solander on Captain Cook's first voyage to the Pacific. And some, they were put in here just yesterday. It's the National Herbarium of New South Wales and it is way more than just a filing cabinet for plants. To start with, the work in the herbarium helps us protect plants against extinction. Think of it like a kind of botanical safe house. The villains are things like bushfires, habitat destruction, drought, weeds, disease and climate change, which all threaten our unique native plants with extinction. But thanks to the herbarium collection, which is growing every day, scientists can get unique insights into a plant's past in order to help protect its future. Scientists can even extract DNA from herbarium specimens that are sometimes well over 100 years old in order to help understand how species are related to one another, why they have grown where they have grown, and correlate this with past climate data to try and predict what might happen to them in the future. The herbarium has even played a role in helping to solve a few crimes in its time, like the devastating 1960 kidnapping and murder of eight-year-old Graham Thorne. Dr Barbara Briggs is one of Australia's foremost botanists and has been performing incredible research at the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney, for over 60 years. She was one of the scientists tasked with helping to identify tiny plant fragments taken from the rug in which the body was wrapped. Using the herbarium collection and the relevant literature, Barbara and the team discovered two plant species that aren't often found growing in the same location. And it was these botanical clues that helped police narrow down the search to a house with those two plant species. And the killer eventually confessed. The herbarium's crime-fighting capabilities don't stop there. As we know, plants are powerful, which is why some of them have very strict laws around their use. Welcome to the herbarium's sealed section. This is where the illicit plants are kept. In the 60s, New South Wales police were involved in cultivating marijuana at the Royal Botanic Garden, Sydney, to help train their staff on how to recognise illegal plants. And still to this day, our scientists work closely with police and counter-terrorism authorities to help identify plant material linked to top secret cases. Sometimes, our scientists even attend court hearings as expert witnesses. The sealed section's all padlocked, so unfortunately, you won't be able to get your hands on any of the specimens in here. Our botanists travel all over the country, from the ocean to rainforests, deserts and mountaintops, adding about eight to 10,000 new plant specimens every year to the filing cabinet. Some of these are also species new to science. It's important to collect, store and give plants a scientific name so we know what's out there. Think of it as a sort of stock take of our landscape. But here's the thing, with around 1.4 million plant specimens already here and more being added every day, this filing cabinet is getting pretty full. In fact, the herbarium will have completely run out of space by 2022. And this is why it's getting a brand new home at the Australian Botanic Garden, Mount Annan. To discover more about the herbarium and the massive task of building this new facility, I had a chat to Chief Executive Denise Aura. So I know there are heaps of plant specimens in here, but how many plants, algae, fungi, all of that, how, <laughs> how many have been described and discovered and documented in the last 25 years? Uh, about 3,400, and you're right, it is plants, algae, fungi, lichens. The other really interesting part of that is we always use that terminology of discovered, described and named. And the other interesting part in here is we also have the Banks and Solander collection. That dates back to 1770. And so the plant specimens that are kept in here, you know, what conditions do you need in a herbarium to keep them safe? Definitely temperature control. That's one of the most important things because a specimen needs to be kept dry. You can feel it. You're standing in here and it's always cool. What you need to do is also not have infestation of pests, bugs. That's a really tricky one. And as a building becomes, I guess, near its end of life, those types of things are, are more difficult to protect because you're putting in manual processes. And that's really where we're at with this building. So the existing National Herbarium in New South Wales, this building's coming to end of life. 
So why are we building a new national herbarium of New South Wales facility? One of the big things besides protecting it from pests is capacity. So we've reached capacity and we did a case study, actually we're going back 2006, 2007, where we knew this 1980s building would reach capacity by 2022. And how will the new National Herbarium of New South Wales facility at Mount Annan, how will that help advance science and conservation overall? So the main thing is, first of all, you've created a hub, but you've actually created six new bolts so you can expand the collection. Um, you're future-proofing, let's say, for the next 200 years. But the other part of it is creating um, links as well with other institutions. And a big thing, a part of our core objects is the dissemination of information and the understanding of our collection. So building the new herbarium, raising the awareness of it, creating the Australian Institute of Botanical Science, and really exciting, digitising the collection before it goes to Mount Annan, now makes the reach more global. And it's, you'd be surprised how many people are doing research and just want to know about the specimens. But moving this massive collection of very delicate and precious plant specimens is no easy task. To find out more about what's happening to the herbarium specimens in preparation for that big move, I caught up with Dr. Marco Doretto and Dr. Hannah McPherson from the Australian Institute of Botanical Science. What's happening inside this room to all the herbarium specimens? Well, to kickstart our big move, we're conducting the Southern Hemisphere's largest herbarium digitisation project, and that's where we're making high-resolution images of all the plant specimens in the National Herbarium of New South Wales. And those images, who gets to see them and how? Well, everyone. They'll be available online and they'll be freely available to you, me, the public, researchers and all of us. It's an amazing project that really opens up so many opportunities for looking at changes in the landscape for various groups of species and understanding how our flora might respond to climate change. But then it also opens opportunities for tapping into new technologies like artificial intelligence to analyse the images and the data. And it also safeguards the specimens. It'll mean that people can see everything online and not have to handle the specimens as much. The new herbarium also has six fireproof vaults to protect the collection from bushfires and other extreme temperature events. So by keeping and protecting the incredible contents of this amazing filing cabinet safe at a new state-of-the-art facility, scientists can make faster and more informed decisions about conserving our native plants in the wild. You can support this vital project with a donation to the Australian Institute of Botanical Science. Fight for our flora and make an impact. Go to botanicgardens.org.au slash donate to help protect our plants and our future.